Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Miss Ashley and I work for the Virginia Beach Public Library. And today we're going to do some science experiments about my favorite animal, penguins. So you should have gotten your kit by now. Um, so we're going to explore a little bit about what's in the kit. And then we're going to talk about some extra supplies that you need. So in your kit, you should have a little bag and in the little bag is going to be a water dropper, some animals, two penguin feet, two penguin flippers or arms, and one penguin beak, two eyes, a black crown, and an orange crown, and finally a balloon. Also in the bag, you'll have a white penguin outline and a black penguin outline as well as a penguin feather experiment. It looks like this. A types of penguin booklet. A types of penguin worksheet. A book on how penguins grow. A penguin sequencing activity, and finally, penguin sequencing picture and word match, and last, a worksheet that has on the back some further activities you can explore at home, and on the front, it lists the different parts of the penguin that you can fill in. All right, so we're gonna start with our penguin craft. So you're gonna want to get some glue for this because we're gonna need to glue our penguin together. So we're gonna get out our black penguin body and we're gonna put that flat down on the table and our white, this is gonna be our penguin's belly because they have white bellies. So we're gonna use our glue stick or if you have a glue bottle or tape, any of those work. And we're gonna put glue all over the white belly so that we can stick it on top of our black penguin body because their bodies are black but they have white bellies. Then we can add the rest so we can add our beak so you can add some glue onto their beak and you can add that right on there just like that. Then he's going to need some eyes so we can put some glue on the eyes. One eye, two eyes. Then we'll do our flippers. So the best way to do the flippers is to make sure that we're putting them, you might have to turn one of them around so that way we have one on each side and penguins use these flippers to swim really fast in the water. All right, so one on one side and one on the other side. And then last, we have their webbed feet and we'll put those down at the bottom. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right at the top there and then just tuck it right underneath my penguin's body. And penguins don't really have knees like we do. That's why they waddle around. They have great webbed feet that help them to swim in the ocean. 
So there is our penguin. And then our last thing. So parents, you can let your child develop some cutting skills with this. Um, it's a good one for that because they're just going to want to cut the lines right here. So we're going to use our scissors to cut each one. And you can color these in if you want. Or if you don't want to color them in, you can leave them blank like I am. But this is the different foods that penguins eat. So bigger penguin species will eat squid and octopus. And then the smaller penguins, they tend to stick with fish. and also krill. So we're gonna stick all of those with our glue or our tape right in our penguin's belly, just like that. All right, we're gonna put that to the side, close up my glue, and we're gonna do an experiment. So for this one, we're gonna want our penguin waterproof wings experiment. So penguins have a wax coating on their feathers. And this wax coating helps keep them dry and warm while they're in the water. So we're going to use a crayon to color in one of our penguins and leave the other one blank. We're going to use a crayon because a crayon has wax. So get out your black crayon and one penguin will say, do not color this penguin. And then the other one says, color this penguin. So we're going to color this penguin in and we're going to color him in pretty thick so that we have a big, nice wax coating on him. And you don't have to worry about coloring him in fancy or worry about coloring in the lines because we just want to get a wax coating on him because that's going to help keep him dry. And while your child is coloring, parents, you can grab a cup of water because we're going to need some water for this experiment. And once we have a nice wax coating, we're gonna get out our dropper. So with our dropper, we're gonna squeeze the top of it. And while you're holding it down, stick it in your cup of water, just like that. And then once it's in the water, you let go. You don't squeeze anymore. And it'll fill up some with water. We're gonna take that water and we're going to drop it on our penguin that's not colored first. So we're going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see our penguin's getting a little wet. Our paper's getting a little wet there. All right, we're going to do it again. We're going to squeeze the top of it, stick it in the cup, and then we're going to let go. Now we're going to drop water on the other penguin, the one that has a wax coating on his feathers. And we'll see what happens to the water. You see that? It should be beating up a little bit. So it's not really soaking through the paper like it is on this side. And that's because of all the wax helps keep him dry. Whereas this guy, since he doesn't have any wax on his feathers, he's getting rather wet and cold. All right, so we're gonna put this one to the side. And next, we're gonna get out our types of penguin book. So you can read that together at home. It goes through the different types of penguins with pictures. And you can color that in and talk about the penguins. And then, you can get out your types of penguins worksheet and use your book for clues for picture matching. So you're going to match the word over here, the type of penguin, with the picture on this side. 
So what I would do is I would hold it right here so that they can find that penguin here. And you can see this one's right down here. And it says that that's the emperor penguin. And that starts with an E. So you can get out your crayon and you can look for the E for emperor and draw a line from here to here. And keep going until you have all of your penguins. All right. And now we're going to move on to the life cycle of a penguin. So this book here explains the different stages that a penguin goes. It starts as an egg, and then the parents have to incubate the egg, and then it hatches, and the baby's called a chick and it has to stay with its parents to stay warm. And then it starts to grow feathers and it's called a fledgling. And then eventually the fledgling turns into an adult. So you're gonna wanna take some scissors and carefully cut out the pictures down here. And once we have the pictures, we can glue them in order. So I'm just going to cut that extra bit off down there. So we know that they start out as an egg. So we'll find the picture as an oval an egg and we'll put it in the first square. So we'll use a little bit of glue or tape, whatever you have handy. And we'll glue that one into the first square. And then you keep going with each stage. And again, you can use the book here to give you picture clues um, to help them match up the different stages. All right, and we have two more activities. So for the next one, you're gonna wanna cut out the pictures and the words and separate them. So it looks like this. So you have your pictures here and your words here. And you can lay out maybe two at a time or three depending upon their level. So we have chick, pouch, and egg. So we have the three words, and so we're going to want to try to find the egg, which looks like this. And we'll find the E-G-G -G for egg and put the picture right beside it. And then we're going to want to find the one for pouch which is this here with our baby in the pouch. It goes there. And then we're gonna wanna find the chick. So the chick and the fledgling look different. The fledgling is a little fuzzy looking because he's got feathers growing in, whereas the chick looks pretty smooth. So we'll put the chick right there. So you can match up all of your words and pictures together. And parents, if you think you're gonna forget which ones go together. A little tip is you can take a picture of it with your phone before you cut it out and that way you can make sure that they match up correctly. But I'll go ahead and hold them up on the screen here in case anybody needs to pause the video um, to make sure that they've matched them correctly. All right. And so for our last activity, we're going to use our balloon. So you want to go ahead and blow up your balloon and do it kind of small, like a small egg shape, not a big one, because it'll be easier to do our activity. All right, hopefully by now you have your balloon blown up and tied into a little egg shape. So for this one, we're going to practice being penguin parents. So they have a really important job. So they need to keep this egg safe and most importantly, 
warm because where they live there's a lot of really cold weather and snow and ice and if the egg gets cold it's not good so what they do is they stick their egg on their feet like this and they have to use their body heat to keep it warm and so they'll have to try to waddle around but keep the egg on their feet and don't let it roll away and a lot of times, mommy and daddy have to take breaks. They have to go eat fish or go sleep. And so they'll have to transfer the egg from mommy to daddy. So you can also try with your grown up at home or a sibling or a friend, you can try transferring the egg from your feet to their feet to see if you can do that. But the most important thing is to not let the egg roll away. All right, so that's everything we have in our kit for today. You guys can be sure to check out the library's webpage for more programs. Um, we have a ton coming up, and I will see you guys later. Bye.